Aside from just looking really, really awesome and being heaps of fun, what use is the torch? Why did you go with the torch? The torch. Oh, sorry, a flashlight. Yeah, that's I know, a sorry. That's really true. <laughs> Whenever I say torch, people think I'm talking about like a flaming yeah, torch. I know, yeah. Okay, I'll ask it again. <laughs> Welcome to TransLogic, I'm Jonathan Buckley. We live in a time where the line between technology and transportation has merged. Whether it's infotainment systems, safety features, or even the build of the car itself, cutting edge technology is helping to guide where the auto industry is going. And that's why Ford has made the switch between Dearborn to Silicon Valley for their all new research and innovation center. Well, I'm feeling very privileged to be standing here in front of one of the most beautiful cars I've ever laid eyes on with the guy that's in charge of the whole thing, Mark Fields, president and CEO of Ford Motor Company. In this facility, you're researching a lot of different areas from automated driving, mm -hmm. composites, lightweight materials. Yep. How is that all going? Coming here to Silicon Valley, we really want to make a lot of progress on mobility, autonomous vehicles, using analytics. So coming to Silicon Valley was a very deliberate part on us to go to where the talent is, but also importantly, to be part of the community here. Yeah. As Ford sort of looked around, knocked on a few doors next door and said, hey, would you like to come across and uh, join the team? Well, that's, that's one of the benefits of being here. When you're part of the community, you begin to build relationships. And we can go right down the road and meet with companies that have offices right down the street. And these relationships yeah. lead to technical opportunities and they lead to innovative new ideas. Uh, one thing I have to say I love that you've done here is that you're, it seems like you're allowed to write on everything. Walls, tables. <laughs> is that just in case inspiration hits you at any moment? Part of the ecosystem here is having the right kind of environment here to, to stimulate innovation, yep. right? Which means having open collaboration of spaces, it means having walls you can write on and whiteboards. Yeah. What are we working on here at the Research and Innovation Center? The, the central theme of the work we do here is around our, our strategy, what we're calling Ford Smart Mobility. And thinking about all of these technologies through the lens of what does it mean to the customer? And not, sometimes even the unexpressed needs of the customers and the consumers, because they may not know what they, what they really, really want. want <laughs> There's right? a famous they guy from Silicon right? Valley who said that. People don't know what they want yet, we have exactly. to give it to them. Some of the stuff that we've worked with, uh, parking solutions, obviously that's a big one right now. Uh, I read a little something about Nest and home integration with your car. How does that work? So Nest is right up the street. It's a great okay. example of why being here matters. Yep. We're creating a connected ecosystem where the vehicle sends a message to your smart home saying, I'm about to arrive. Please turn on the uh, either the cooler or the heater if it's yeah. cold outside so that I, I'm comfortable when I come into my home. InfoCycle is using the Ford developed open innovation platforms to allow you to interact with signals from a vehicle. We're connecting an open XC enabled uh, sensor to a bicycle that can then communicate with a back-end computer to then analyze, well, how are you riding that bike and how's that bike interfacing with other vehicles on the road? It's yeah. gonna help us learn how we can improve that experience. Well, let's talk about the elephant in the room. It's actually a gazelle, if you remember. Oh, it's a gazelle. <laughs> it's beautiful. The Ford GT. It's such an iconic vehicle. When you think about uh, the GT, the balance is always, how do you make the design look progressive and forward-looking without losing the bloodlines yeah. of what makes it a GT? And I think our team has done a wonderful job on that, on keeping those bloodlines in there. What are some of the big things that you've added to this car? I mean, the lightweight components mm -hmm. alone are a major leap forward. But it's really a decade's worth of innovation in areas of lightweighting, in areas of EcoBoost engines, and in areas of aerodynamics. The passenger cell and the driver cell is carbon fiber. Yep. The front and rear structures are aluminum. The body panels are carbon fiber. It keeps the car light, so you get great power to weight ratio great driving dynamics, and a very lightweight vehicle, but one that still stays planted on the ground. Pretty much any supercar we drive nowadays, any sports car, has some kind of uh, software assistance for the driver. Yeah, we'll have um, you know traction control, stability control, torque vectoring, uh, active aerodynamics, active ride control. 
and we spend a lot of time making sure that the intervention of those systems comes in very smoothly and fluently, and, and hopefully the driver doesn't notice. So that you don't feel like it's bogging you down as you're flying out of a corner Absolutely. and all of a sudden everything starts to stop. And if anything, the aspects of it that, you know, when you get out of the car, you know, thinking you're a better driver than maybe you actually are because you had a little help. Yeah. While it wasn't designed here in Palo Alto, a lot of the technologies have their heritage in the research and innovation organization for years. Like lightweighting technology, EcoBoost was invented by the research team. Dynamics and controls capabilities, yeah. all of those are the heritage building blocks, if you will, that, that have made the GT possible. Okay, so there's, a, there's an imaginary car in front of me, yeah? Right. In talking of the HMI or the human machine interface, we have a sort of a setup here in this facility right here where we can actually virtually tour around the GT. We've got a, a headset, very similar to Oculus headset. Yep. Um, it's got all the engineering data in it, and we can walk, literally visually walk around the vehicle. Can I bang into it by accident? Like, <laughs> it won't hurt. <laughs> to get a sense of the proportions of the vehicle. I feel like I'm a car thief but trying, <laughs> to find, trying to find the wires. But for us as engineers, even more importantly, when we see all the interfaces, we can actually stick our head into the vehicle and it'll cut engineering sections. Yeah. And all the engineering data behind that, we can see how all the parts are mating together. Oh, no way. So I can see the engine and everything. Yeah. When it comes to pricing the GT, there hasn't really been any solid price given. There's been murmurings that it's around the 400,000 mark. Is that? Well, we haven't announced pricing, but you know, that's in the ballpark. And we're wow. talking about obviously a supercar, uh, very limited production, 250 a year. Yep. Uh, we think that's a pretty competitive price for the type of car that we're talking about. Right. You know, you can go and get yourself a Lamborghini that's got a V10 to go and spend that type of money on essentially a V6. You think people might have a little bit of trouble appreciating that, appreciating that at first? Well, what's, what's great about the, the supercar market is it's very performance based. Yeah. And so the numbers that we'll be getting uh, with the power to weight ratio that we'll have, I think are gonna dispel any concerns about a V6 EcoBoost and what's capable of doing. Wow. Plus the benefits is not only do you get a more fuel efficient uh, yeah. supercar, but uh, with that smaller displacement engine, it frees up the designers to be even more uh, bold. So when you see the, the cockpit on this, how it tapers towards the end, like a fighter jet, you're able to do that because you can wrap the carbon fiber yeah. around the engine a lot more tightly. Yeah. Okay, yeah, excellent. Obviously, we haven't had a chance to drive it yet. I'm gonna talk to you about that in a little while. <laughs> <laughs> What we've seen here today has definitely got us excited for the future of Ford and for the auto industry as a whole. Clearly, Ford want to lead the pack when it comes to this new technology paradigm shift. We just hope everybody else is paying attention. For TransLogic, I'm Jonathan Buckley. We'll catch you next time.